All right, welcome to your writing guide for both Government 2305 and 2306. This presentation will just give you some general guidelines for how to write your essays in both classes. Also, I'll be posting some other links, um, some useful YouTube videos that I've found helpful in writing papers. And also, I'll be posting a little bit of my own research so that you can maybe get an idea of the style and, and the format that I'm kind of looking for. So I'm going to present to both classes in this lecture, and hopefully it'll be some useful, helpful information, and be sure to check out the other links that I post on the course website as well. So let's go ahead and begin. Just some general formatting paper guidelines here. I would like both, the, both, of, both classes, I would, like both of your, I would like your papers to be double-spaced. I would like it to be in a 12-point font, and use a standard font style. Use something like Times New Roman, uh, Arial, Helvetica, uh, Calibri tends to be the new one on the new Microsoft Word. So it's just a standard font style. Don't do it. Don't do it too. Don't don't go too crazy with uh, Comic Sans or uh, I'm trying to think wide Latin other other crazy font styles. Use something standard uh, that'll make your paper look neat and clean. Go ahead and use one inch margins all around. I believe that is the default for the new Microsoft Word. Uh, I would just check to make sure. Don't make don't make your margins really wide so that it'll make a paper longer. I want to make sure that you guys have enough uh, information and valuable ideas to put in your paper. And you to, Writing five pages should not be uh, any problem at all. Use one space after, after periods. Uh, I also think that's the new default, default, and default in Microsoft Word, but be sure to go ahead and use one space after periods. I'll also be checking your period font size. I don't know if many of you know that trick. Uh, some college professors don't pay attention to that stuff, but if you, uh, it's, there's this kind of thing where if you make your periods a larger font size than the rest of the paper, it will expand the length of your paper. I just kind of gave you guys a cheat on how to cheat in the rest of your college classes, but I will be checking that because uh, I kind of know that trick and I won't say that I haven't used that trick before. Uh, for your header, in your header, go ahead and just put your name in the right-hand corner. Put your class, whether it's Government 2305 or 2306, and just put the essay number also. Uh, that way, I know for Government 2305, you guys have to write two papers, so be sure to signify whether it's essay number one or essay number two. But please put the essay number just so I'm not confused here. So name in the upper right-hand corner, and then under that, put Government 2305 or 2306, and then put your essay number so that I can keep track of them. Uh, section headings are, are optional. I, when I write personally, I like to have my section headings. That way it divides up my ideas clearly and it helps the reader follow them. So if you want to put section headings such as introduction, body, uh, ideas, conclusions, whatever you want to put, those are optional. Um, but I would advocate for them because I like to use them in my own writing. So uh, if you want to use section headings, go ahead. So these are just some general formatting. Um, just be sure to follow these paper guidelines and you guys should be good. Uh, and then remember, for all essays, the page length is five pages. Uh, five pages is a reasonable amount, and I think that most college professors would require you to write five pages. So if you have, if you have plenty of ideas, uh, be sure to, uh, I think you can easily expand it out into five pages. Uh, so, if you're in Government 2306, you can go ahead and forward just a little bit, but for Government 2305, this is your first paper topic. Your, your first paper topic, remember, is due March 13th. That's your first essay due. So you have about a month from now, uh, you have a couple weeks, and it's five pages, so you should be able to, you know, write one page a week and you, and you should be fine. For your first paper topic, though, uh, pick one thing about the U.S. Constitution, and this can include amendments that you think should be changed. Something that you disagree with, or maybe even agree with, but you just want to alter it just a little bit. Pick one thing about the U.S. Constitution or the amendments that you think should be changed. What modifications would you make? Go ahead and address that question. Would you propose an additional amendment to the Constitution to correct this flaw? Uh, explain, your reason, explain your reasons for making this change. Uh, also provide some background on the, part, on the part of the Constitution you choose and why you believe it was included in the Constitution in the first place. So this first paper topic can cover a variety of topics. So if you want to talk about how uh, the age requirement for the legislature should be lowered or changed, if you want to talk about even Congress's salary, uh, if you want to talk about gun rights, if you want to talk about freedom of speech and freedom of religion and how we should change the First Amendment, 
Some people like to write about the Fourth Amendment, how the legal search and seizures and the NSA and spying and things like that should be changed. Really, read, just read through the Constitution. You might find something, some political issue that you're very passionate about, or you may find something that you disagree with in the structure of government that you want to change. There's a variety of topics you can cover. So just pick one thing about the U.S. Constitution. It can be anything that you want to make modifications to. Explain a little bit about it. Provide me with a little bit of background on the Constitution. And then tell me what specifically you want to change and then how you would go about that. So there's a kind of a three set. There's three pages right there, uh, and plus your introduction and your conclusion. So as, be expansive as you want. Uh, be as detailed as you want. And be, be very passionate in your topics. Um, so really, there's, there's a variety there for you that you can choose from. So uh, that's your pa paper topic number one. Remember, it is due March, March 13th, so you have about a month. And I, I think you should easily be able to make, make five pages out of this. So you remember this essay is worth 100 points, your first 100 points, and then the second essay is worth another 100 points. For Government 2305, moving on to your paper topic number two. Your paper topic number two isn't due till May 1st. So you have your first paper due in about a month, and then you have close to a month and a half to complete your second paper topic. Your second paper topic, once again, is a lot more wide open, and you can pick about anything that you really want to, something that you're passionate about. So pick one policy debate. Now this, like I said, this is wide open. It can be uh, marijuana legalization, gun regulation, uh, abortion rights, same-sex marriage, uh, really uh, Citizens United and campaign funding, anything, anything that we really talk about in this class, feel free, to, feel free to cover. But pick one policy debate that you believe is the defining issue of our modern times, something that you're really, really passionate about, something that you think will definitely affect the future. Explain both sides of the debate. Provide your opinion on the issue. What is your opinion? I really want to know. And like I said, I don't care if I disagree with your opinion or not. Uh, I just care that you have an opinion, uh, black, white, or otherwise, liberal, conservative, libertarian, populist. I just, I don't really care. I care that you do have an opinion and that you're thinking about politics and thinking about government. Do you believe that this issue should receive more or less attention? Do you think it's not getting enough attention in the media? Do you think it's already been beaten dead, but we really just need to resolve it now? What interest groups are involved? Think about uh, interest groups. So if you're talking about healthcare, think about doctors associations. If you're talking about gun rights, think about the NRA and the Brady campaign and things like that. So what interest groups are involved regarding the issue? And what can you do as a citizen to contribute to its debate or resolution? So uh, would you want to go on a canvassing sort of deal? Do you want to uh, lobby Congress? Do you want to write your congressman? Do you want to increase awareness somehow? Do you want to um, set up a, a campus organization or something like that that would that would contribute to the debate. So what can you do as an ordinary citizen to really get involved in this political issue? Uh, like I said, your due date is May 1st, so that's the last the last week before your final test. And once again, five pages, I have no problem. All right, Government 2306. So if you're in Government 2305, now's your time to skip ahead. But welcome back, Government 2306. Your paper topic, your, you guys only have one essay uh, because Texas government is, is a much, uh, it's not a smaller class, but it's a much more focused class, so there's not as many paper topics to really cover here. Um, and then also, I understand I also have some high school students in, in Government 2306, so I know you guys have other things going on, extracurriculars and whatnot. So Government 2306 only has one paper topic, and this is your paper topic, and it's due May 1st. Uh, once again, five pages. And then follow the guidelines on the other one, on the other sides. Your paper topic should address this this long prompt here. As we have discussed during lecture and in class and uh, read in the textbook, Texas has experienced changing demographics. That's one thing that we really focused on in Unit One. Uh, it's in, experienced also the influence of new cultures and evolving political landscape. Looking forward, looking into your future, uh, assuming that you guys are going to be Texas citizens for a little while. I'm actually leaving after this year, but looking forward to Texas's future, what do you believe will be the defining issue of Texas politics in the years to come? Uh, I want you to pick one policy debate that you believe is the most important issue that Texas must, addre must address. So uh, this could be anything. This could be uh, gun rights. This could be abortion rights in Texas. This could be immigration law. This could be uh, marijuana legalization, uh, same-sex marriage, um, really anything. Anything that's really 
pressing Texas, anything that you think is really going on in Texas that's a passionate debate here in Texas, and something that you're passionate about yourself. I don't want you to write some topic that you really don't believe in, something that you believe in. Get fired up about this, because this is going to affect your future here in Texas. That being said, I want you to explain both sides of the debate and provide your opinion on the issue. Now, I've said this before, whether you're liberal, conservative, libertarian, or populist, I don't really care. Uh, just give an opinion. That's what I really care about, that you have an opinion and that you're thinking about politics and that you're thinking about government. So provide your opinion on the issue. Do you believe that this issue should receive more or less attention? Uh, is it receiving not enough news media or is it receiving too much and it's just something that we need to resolve right now? What interest groups are involved regarding the issue? So think about the NRA, think about the Brady campaign, think about immigration rights, uh, ACLU. Just think about different interest groups. You can Google those sorts of things. What can you do as a citizen to contribute to its debate or resolution? So can you form an interest group? Do you want to lobby your legislature? Things like that. What can you do? What can you do to get involved and really fired up about the issue? Once again, this is due on May 1st, uh, so this will be the last week before your final exam, and it should be five pages. Right now, it's, I'm going to post this on in February, so you guys have three months to go ahead and write your paper. Uh, should be no problem at all to write or to write five pages. Uh, just tackle, do do what I do, tackle one page, one page a week, and you should be fine. All right, so now back now back to speaking to both of you. These are some things to think about as you write. Uh, just questions to address. And if you want an A on this paper, you're going to go ahead and answer all these questions on, the, on this slide. Think about what am I dealing with? What is the specific issue? Lay that out in your introduction. Uh, let me know right away what you're dealing with. What are both sides of the issue? Lay this out in your body. What are both sides of the issue? Be sure to talk about uh, what your opponents may say or and then talk about what you believe and what people that agree with you may believe. I want both sides of the issue so that you realize there's a political debate and so that you realize that both sides do have an opinion, even if you may disagree with one. What modifications would you make if you're talking about the Constitution, like you are in Government 2305, or, what, or if you're talking about the current policy, uh, current policy debate prompt that I'm giving you guys? What modifications would you make to it? Um, how would you want to see this issue addressed or this, or this Constitution changed or anything like that? How would I deal with the issue? Uh, like I said, how are you going to get involved? Uh, how are you going to increase awareness? Those sorts of things. And then why are you concerned? T really tell me why you're passionate about this. Uh, tell me why you have taken an interest in this in this issue. And, and tell me why, why you really care. Uh, that's, why I want, that's kind of what I want you to address in the why am I concerned question. Things to include. Include a little background about, uh, about your topic. Uh, give me a little background. Tell me how the policies may have changed and the Constitution may have changed throughout. Give me specific examples. Give me uh, an example, maybe even a personal example of how this issue has affected you. Uh, give me an example of maybe a person or a high-profile case out there that had to deal with this issue. Uh, tell me who's involved with the issue. Once again, going back to the, um, going back to the uh, interest groups that are involved. Who's involved with this issue? What are both sides of the debate? Uh, and then give me maybe a specific court case or legislation that handles the issue. So if you're talking about gun rights, there's plenty of gun rights Supreme Court cases or even Texas court cases. Uh, maybe it is same-sex marriage. There's a lot of court cases on that as well. Health care, there's a lot of court cases. So uh, I'm going to give you also a link to a website. Uh, it's a website that collects all the Supreme Court cases and their verdicts and things like that. It's called oyes.org and it you can look up uh, Supreme Court case, Supreme Court cases by topic. So that may help you try to find an example. Be sure to cite that uh, website if you do happen to use that. Just for writing in general, I'm going to post a few videos that have helped me develop my writing and develop my uh, skills as a research and a research paper writer. So. But these are just some things to think about. So go ahead and watch those videos also, but go ahead and watch this one and think about think about these things as you're writing. Uh, I want you to really think critically when you write. I want you to think about how you're going to structure your paragraph. Are you going to write a compare and contrast kind of paragraph? Are you going to give me one idea and then contrast it to another? You know, think about what is, it, what is your topic sim similar to? What is your topic different from? What is this opinion similar to? How would these two ideologies kind of go together? How would these two political groups kind of go together? 
what is it what are they different from how would the opposite political ideology respond and things like that so compare and contrast political ideologies compare and contrast the issues things like that what is it similar to what is it different from feel free to include definitions also uh, Definitions are a way to expand your paper that really do help. Define your issue, you know. Uh, give me a dictionary definition of, uh, according to Webster's Dictionary, yada, yada, yada is this. You know, give me a clear definition. So that way I know what terms you're actually working with. Um, also, I am just thought of this just came to mind. Also, maybe if you're dealing with marijuana legalization, define how, define how uh, the federal government defines uh, marijuana and cannabis and things like that. And then think about how the state the states may redefine it and things like that um think about different kind of groups you know uh with the marijuana legalization example think about the groups of narcotics and things uh what are some concrete examples of abortion rights uh gun rights you know things like that how is it defined differently in different locations or how is it defined in the dictionary even so feel free to include definitions also, when you think critically about writing, think about cause and effect relationships. Uh, often, you know, one thing caused another thing, which led to this. So if you're talking about a Supreme Court case, think about how the Supreme Court case uh, caused this effect. And then and because of this definition that the Supreme Court laid out, it's served this purpose, you know. And also think about what else is missing. So think about cause and effect, re effect relationships as you're writing. This will definitely develop your writing and make sure that you're relaying clear thoughts and precise thoughts to guide your reader or I guess I'll be your only reader to guide me along as well. Um, also feel free to include some testimony you know uh, if you want to cite like a news article where, some, where someone talked about the issue or talked about their opinion on the issue feel free to include testi testimony and quotations from other people as well. Uh, I provided this source down here if you need to think about uh, if you want to think more about thinking critically about writing uh, feel free to use the Purdue OWL. Purdue OWL stands for Purdue Online Writing Lab. It comes from Purdue University. Their English department has put together this very nice website where you can really research how to be a good researcher, basically, and how to write clearer and how to improve your writing. So uh, most of the sources from today's lecture come from the Purdue OWL, so be sure to check that out. More on thinking critically about writing. Um, think about your circumstances. Think about these kind of questions as you as you go on in your writing. Um, also think about facts. You know, is there an issue? You know, how did it begin? What where where it cause it? Where what are its causes? What changed to create the issue? Who's involved? So when you're thinking when you're talking about the background in your paper, go ahead and include and be sure to kind of address these as well. Uh, and then when you're talking about the present day. Think about these circumstance kind of questions, you know, sort, sort of things like that. Oh, sorry. Um, quality, you know, think about how serious is the issue, what are the costs of the issues. So uh, back to the Constitution topic. If you want to change the Constitution, you got to think about the potential cost of changing that. If, when you're thinking about the issues and things like that, think about the cost of resolving the issues, you know. Um, think about the cost of creating new legislation, of forming interest groups, things like that. So be sure to address those questions as well. And then policy, you know, who should address this issue? So, um, you know, we're, when we're, think, we're kind of thinking about the future on those issue prompts, but think about, you know, whether the legislature or, or the president should take an executive order or the governor or things like that. Who's really going to be affected by this issue and who must address this issue to have it resolved? So these are all kind of our questions that you really need to think about when you're writing, and if you address all of these questions, I have no doubt you're going to receive an A on this essay, and I also have no doubt that you'll develop a, a clear, well thought out essay. Not only that, you're going to develop a valuable writing skill. This whole point of this essay, this essay assignment is to develop your writing because writing is such an essential part of communication. And whether you go on to college or not, or whether you go on, whether you go on further in college, or whether you're going to go ahead and have a job afterwards. You're going to have to be able to write and express yourself clearly. So that's the whole point of this, is develop, to develop your writing skills as both a scholar and a citizen. Now for the paper itself, I really want you to focus on citation. Uh, particularly if you're going to go on in college, citation is going to be a huge part of your writing and to make sure that you're not plagiarizing and to make sure uh, you're not taking other, other people's ideas, just that you're relaying the ideas and the information. So that being said, I will check for plagiarism. 
Um, if you do plagiarize, I have no problem failing your essay. I will definitely fail your essay. Do not copy and paste from websites without citing it. Do not copy and paste from books or other sources without citing it. So plagiarism is just you know, the use of another's work, words, or ideas without proper attribution. So if you do take, take anything from another's work uh, or, another, or another text or anything like that, please, please cite it and cite it properly. And we're going to go ahead and talk about how to cite it properly. If you're unsure if you should cite, go ahead and cite it anyways. If you're unsure about uh, whether this idea came from you or another person, you know, maybe you had this idea before, but another person has already covered it, go ahead and cite that other person anyways. It's a safe bet. That's the easiest way to do it. Um, and then go ahead and use MLA or APA format. We're going to go ahead and talk about that here in just a little bit. But if you need more information on MLA or APA format, and if I'm not clear enough, be sure to consult this Purdue OWL for more information. So citations. I want you to use in-text citations. And what I mean by that is as you, as you go along in your essay and you cite, if you cite an idea, put immediately following that idea or fact, put in parentheses the in-text citation. And now I'm going to go ahead and post my own research paper, so hopefully it'll be clearer for you to kind of see how this research or this insect citation is done in research papers. But for now, I'm going to try to go ahead and try to explain it the best I can. So once again, immediately following an idea or fact that requires citation, use use in-text citation. So what I mean is you write out a you write out a sentence sort sort of like this. And this actually comes from my own research paper here. Uh, you you write you cite an idea such as this. Uh, accepting refugees ensures that states can increase their access to foreign aid. That's an idea from an, another paper, that accepting refugees ensures that other states can increase their access to foreign aid. So immediately following that idea from this other paper, you go ahead and cite uh, the author's last name, which is my last name, Rathbun, uh, and then 2013, which is when that article was published. So you cite my name, and then you cite, you cite the year. And that's with one author. If there's only one author of the paper, you cite the author and then the year immediately following their idea. If you have two authors, so say this sentence came from two authors, you would cite author one, author two, and then the year. So I actually wrote this paper with my, with my friend Brandon Stewart. So you would cite my name, and then his name, and then the year. So uh, if you have two authors, Cite one author, second author, and then the year. Sometimes you're going to have multiple author, authors, three or more authors. Uh, so then, therefore, you just cite the first author, and then et al., and then year. So if me and Brandon actually wrote this paper with another author, you would just cite my name and then say et al., which means and others, and then 2013. Et al. means and others. So if you have a really lengthy list of authors or people, just say et al., and that means and others immediately following that sentence. Sometimes you're going to have an organization. You're not going to have an actual author. So for the purposes of your paper, if you're citing the NRA or you're citing the ACLU or you're citing some interest group that has to deal with your issue, cite the organization itself. And so for this one, uh, the United Nations. I just use the United Nations because that's a, that's a well-known organization. You would just say the United Nations and then the year. And those are examples of in-text citations. You just put parentheses around the author and year after the idea that they said themselves or that you're using from them. And this prevents plagiarism because at least I have an idea of the author and the year and then it should match up in your in your works cited page. This is your citations page. It's often called a works cited page. You can call it a citations page. You can even call it a bibliography if you want to. So in addition to the in-text citations, please include a citations page and this will come at the end. This will come at the end of your essay and use a separate page. Insert a, set, insert a page break after your essay and then let me know that it's the citations page. Now for the citations page, you're generally going to use the following format. I want you to give me the author's names, all of them, all of the author's names. Give me the year it was written. Then give me the article name that you got this from or the website that you got this from. Uh, and then give me the name of the journal or the website. Include the link here if it's a website. So in parentheses, after all of this, in parentheses, please give me the link to the website. That way I can click on that link and I can make sure that you guys are not plagiarizing word for word from that website. So don't please don't copy and paste. Remember, if you do plagiarize, I have no problem failing your essay. 
This is just a quick example. This actually comes from my own research paper. It's um, Opeskin Brian, and then he wrote this article about the moral foundations of foreign aid. I gave the journal article here, and then I gave the gave the journal number and the pages that I found it on. Now, once again, if you're having problems, uh, if, if you're unsure about citations, how to format it properly, or anything like that, uh, consult the Purdue Owl. The Purdue Owl, the Purdue Online Writing Lab. It's a great resource resource for learning how to cite as well as write. So if you're gonna if you're gonna do things in MLA citations page, here's your here's the link for you. This will teach you how to cite in MLA and how to write a citations page in MLA. And then also, if you need help with APA, I also have the link there as well. APA is the one that I use and the one that I kind of prefer when I write. Uh, it's generally kind of easier, to be honest with you, uh, at least in my mind. I, I don't know about your personal preferences. But if you want to cite them in APA, here's the resource as well. Now, I know this may seem kind of tedious and kind of lengthy, but that being said, most college professors at the university level will expect this type of work from you. So it is my duty as a teacher here to try to prepare you for that, uh, whether you're going on to college or not. And the main reason is, like I said before, is because you're going to use writing every day in your life and you need to be sure to communicate effectively. And you also need to be sure to develop your own ideas and by using the ideas of others so that you can cite those properly. So citations are long and tedious and I understand that. But really, if you do it as you go along, it shouldn't be that much of a problem. And as you get experience with this, uh, it'll definitely become a lot, lot easier. So uh, that's enough about citations. I just want you to be aware of a few certain things as you uh, write your paper. I have, I've provided a link here for commonly misspelled words. Um, one of my pet peeves, I am going to be checking spelling, grammar, and punctuation. Uh, like I said, because you need to write effectively, you need to write correctly. So, commonly misspelled words, if you misspell these words, uh, I have no problem docking your paper then also. Um, I don't know how many percent, if it's, if it's rampant misspelled words, I'll definitely dock your paper quite a bit, but if it's, um, if it's just a few misspelled words, I understand that myself, so I probably won't dock as much. But, commonly misspelled words, please check out this list, uh, that way you're kind of aware of, what, of what's going on. Use commas. I'm also going to be checking punctuation. Now, commas are important to writing. Don't go crazy with commas, but be sure to use commas when needed. So use commas after. Uh, when you use The examples of when you use com commas after is when after you use a transition word. After you use a transition word, be sure to use a comma. Prepositional phrases that begin the sentence. So if you're using a prepositional phrase and it's beginning the sentence, be sure to use a comma after that prepositional phrase. Complex sentences. So uh, if you need a fr refresher on complex sentences, uh, be sure to consult your English teacher or consult YouTube or Google or whatever. Complex sentences, please use commas after complex sentences that begin the sentence. Use commas before conjunctions. Anytime you use a conjunction, uh, but, and, or, so, for, anytime you use a conjunction, use a comma before that. Also use a comma before a series of words, so be sure to uh, if you're relaying a series of words with ideas, be sure to use a comma before all those words. Please, please, please don't trust spelling and grammar check. Spelling and grammar check has improved by a lot since I was in high school and since I was in middle school and, and things like that. It's definitely improved in this latest version of Word. Uh, Word 2013 is actually pretty good at, at understanding the English language, but don't trust it completely because there's a lot of words that are confused or mistaken. They're similar or mistaken words. And Word sees these as correct words, so they won't actually mark the word. Word Microsoft Word itself won't actually mark it. Uh, but be aware of these similar or mistaken words. Be sure of the difference between your and your, uh, then and than. Understand the difference between effect and effect. Be sure to understand when to use its or its. Its, uh, without the apostrophe, is a possessive. So if you're saying that it owns something, it, use this sort of its. If you're saying it is, use this its with an apostrophe. That's the main difference there. Uh, weather or weather, uh, this is the weather outside. This is a weather to show contrast. Um, a lot is often mistaken because it's, it's actually two separate words. People like to say a lot as one word. Uh, understand the difference between whole and whole. 
anyone or anyone. Ensure, ensure, assure. Those are all different. Be sure to be aware of those. And then new or new. Uh, I've provided a link here for a complete list. So if you want to go ahead and review the complete list of similar or mistaken words, that way you can improve your writing and improve uh, the structure and grammar of your, of your essay. Be sure to uh, look at this complete list. It's a helpful list uh, that I found online. And these similar mistaken words are often confused. Um, I'm sure you've read Facebook posts where people confuse these sorts of things. So just be sure to be aware of those. Um, I believe this is the end of the slides, yes. Um, so in general, if you follow these guidelines, if you learn how to cite properly and you learn to format and think critically about writing, you have no problem getting, getting an A on this essay. Just make sure it's five pages and you follow these general paper, paper guidelines and you'll be fine. Uh, like I said, writing is a lifelong skill. It helps you as a citizen and a scholar. So the more you develop your writing and your writing skill, the better off you'll be in the future. I can guarantee that. If you have any questions about the paper or the essay itself, feel free to let me know. You have all my contact information as always. And I'm also going to go ahead and post other links so that you guys uh, can kind of get an idea of how other people write their research papers. So uh, I'll go ahead and wrap up this uh, wrap up this writing guide lecture. Good luck on your papers. I'm sure you do. I'm sure you guys will do well. I'm very confident in you. I've, I've been very impressed with your discussion board posts and everything so far. So uh, go out, uh, write your papers, and enjoy.